Isn't it funny those moments of rebellion, like early mm -hmm. on, that really sit with you? Like it felt so good. It like it plants seeds for further rebellion yeah. in the future. Well, once you get that feeling, <clears throat> you don't. You want it again and mm -hmm. again, you know, because it takes you out of everything. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I may never get out of this class. I may never finish any of these. I might not graduate. I might, you know. Yeah. But I'm right now. I'm throwing all this shit out. The I'm window. alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it feels good for right now. And it's hard to reconcile that. I think that's a little bit of a comedian's like upbringing. Um, and, and then you have to start being a, you know, then you have kids and it all goes away. You have kids and you grow right out. Whatever's left, I think, when you have kids. I mean, not for everybody. There's some real douchebag parents. But for the most part, I think once the kids come, you know, it's not about you anymore. It's right. about them. So. And it's also, <clears throat> it's it's bizarre watching them go through it. Them going through, like, trying to find their identity and yeah. trying to find their friends group and little disputes that they have in their friends group. Yeah. Like one of my daughters has this one little daughter, uh, w one little friend rather, who's, I don't want to say she's evil, but something's <laughs> wrong. Something's wrong. She's just like yeah. always like very mean to the other girls yeah. and very insulting. And, and for whatever reason, this girl just has like this fire inside of her yeah. and all the other 12 year olds are starting to figure it out now so they're mm -hmm. starting to separate from her mm -hmm. like they gave her a few chances right and so now the mom is contacting the other moms like what's wrong she's such a sweet girl I'm like oh, no, no your daughter's kind of a cunt <laughs> and it's like this, <laughs> it's weird and then you know me and my wife are having this conversation i'm like do you think it's the mom like, who yeah. do you like where's this coming from do you think it's the family like mm -hmm. how does a daughter get to be so insulting and shitty yeah you gotta learn that it, you can't just be like the sweetest kindest person Person in the world and have this fucking hyper aggressive no something's shitty going baby. on i mean there's people like i remember there was a kid when i grew up and he was a mess and he was huge he just got really huge in third grade he was a formidable he was bigger than all of us and uh he was a really bright kid and he was funny and interesting but he had this crazy temper and he would throw these tantrums in the middle of class like something would piss him off and he'd start screaming and throwing shit and he'd get violent <laughs> and the teacher would go to the back then there was like a box on the side of the classroom wall with a clock and a speaker and a button like a microphone like to call the office and they'd call the office and say get mr shanahan he was our one teacher who was big enough to handle this kid and he would come and just subdue him he put wrap his arms around this kid and the kid's face would be purple and mr shanahan would just subdue him until he ran out of he would just collapse and we would all sit there and watch this. And then he'd be taken out of the classroom. And then we'd all talk about him. <laughs> but like, you know, the teacher would say, let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's like, oh, that's, what do you yeah. think's going on yeah. with John? And how do we handle this? Oh, that's cool. He's in our communities, in our class. Oh, that's a great teacher. It was, he was great. Mr. Weisberg, great teacher. And, and then I was always in John's class, fourth grade, fifth grade. And in fifth grade, we had a trip to Cape Cod, the whole fifth grade class goes in cars in the caravan, you know, to Cape Cod, and you live in tents, and you visit the Cranberry Bogs, whatever the fuck you do in Cape Cod. And it's a very social thing, you know? So somebody's mom is driving, so they like, you know, will you come in my car, you know? That was the cool thing. And I got invited to be in Jeff Drew's car, and I was like, this is gonna be, I love Jeff Drew. It's gonna be me and him and Mike McDougal, we're gonna have a great time. But the teacher pulled me aside, and he said, listen, John, the the fucked up kid, he goes, his parents have offered to drive and nobody wants to drive with him. And I, I'm asking you to do it. Oh, boy. And I was like, I, I don't want to do that. And he said, you're, I'm asking you because I think you're a nice person and you're the one person I can think of that I could ask, could you make this sacrifice and let him not feel so isolated? And I was like, fuck. And I was, that made me feel good <laughs> that he wanted me to do it. And I did it, and I got to know him, and he was a really cool kid, and his parents were both professors, really, really bright people. Oh, wow. His father had killed himself, but Ooh. his stepfather and his mother were professors, really intelligent people. That's probably where it came from. I think so. Yeah. It was really hard. His life was really hard. And then I knew him for years after that. We were kind of, we were friends, but he would always explode all the way until, uh, you know, 17 or so. The last time I saw him, he was like 16, I think. 
and he was still he kick, we were talking outside of a Brigham's ice cream in Newton Center and uh he was leaning on the glass of the window and this guy came outside and said don't lean on the glass and so he kicked it and shattered the whole <laughs> the whole window and I walked away I'm like I don't want I don't ever want to see this kid again oh jesus but uh Anyway, just to say that, yeah, the, the, the point of it is I tried to stay friends with that kid. When there is a kid who's really fucked up and has a wire loose, someone's got to be their friend. Yeah. I don't think, you know, it's like I've had girlfriends that are like really cuckoo and my friends have been like, she's bad news. She's crazy. And I'm like, well, somebody has to love her. I mean, I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> if everybody walks away from her because she's nuts, she's going to be alone. Oh, that was always the case with Brian Callen. With Brian Callen, mm -hmm. me and Brian Callen, like Brian Callen was always like the guy who took in all the strays. Yeah. He was like, everything's going to be fine. She's fine. She's fine. We're <laughs> fine. And I was always, you know, his friend going, hey, man, you got to fucking get out of this. Right. Like, you got to get out of this now. This is a, this is a, a dark road you're going down sure this is only going to lead to doom yeah and he was always like hey, you know someone's got to be your girlfriend yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've had a few friendships and relationships like that yes. where i'm like this person's tough like comedian uh, friends that i've had that everybody yeah. else is like i hate that guy i'm like i get it yeah. i'm staying friends with him i get it i'm not going to defend him all over the place but oh you're talking to me i'm friend. friends with alex jones <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> jesus christ I mean, you know jesus christ I mean, that's the ultimate example of that oh yeah on there a big go. scale, too. That's got to be hard. The biggest scale. Oh, God. The biggest scale in the world. That takes a lot of fortitude to just to hang in there. He's not a something. bad guy. No, he I mean, just, I he, know, I he had a psychotic break. Yeah. But Alex Jones got dumped on his head when he was in high school. He's speaking about getting bullied in high school. Yeah. This guy picked him up and pile-drived him, slammed hey, him I on heard, the concrete on his head. Was it John Ronson that did a documentary about him? Or, like, a, he yes. did a thing on NPR. John Ronson did a thing with him where they both went to Bohemian Grove. Where he grew up? This is No, no. Bohemian oh. Grove is this place in California where all the elites go, and they put fucking druid costumes on. Oh, God. And they, they worship Moloch, the owl god. Oh, Jesus and, Christ. And Nixon went there, and Reagan went, went there. there. Yeah. Oh, I oh, thought you were talking Bohemian about, like, Bohemian Grove. Grove. Oh, you don't okay. know what it is? Nixon Bo and Bohemian Reagan Bohemian Grove is a famous place where mm. rich world leaders would meet in Northern California, and they literally worship this Moloch, the owl god, mm -hmm. and, pr and everybody thought it was bullshit, but John Ronson and Alex Jones snuck in. And this is in, like, the 90s? I want to say this wow. is the 90s. I've been friends with Alex since 1998. Wow. That's how I know him. I knew him back when he was protesting George Bush. 